Hi everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. Everybody's doing fine. Um, I'm recording this video and I feel like it's a very touchy subject. I had plans to record it. I was doing research and stuff and um, yesterday I was just emotional and I felt like why don't I just get up today and just record what I'm thinking inside. And of course, I definitely had plans for this video. I wanted to look all glammed, get my hair done, get my makeup done and record it. But um, I'm just gonna go straight to the point. There's definitely a gap between African and African Americans. And to me, it's really sad. It's really disappointing because like from an outsider or anyone else of different race looking into the um, situation they're gonna be like why why is there like um, a gap a disparity between African and African Americans because like I mean if you look at us we are the same skin tone we it's just that we have different variation of our skin tone it's really sad but let me just go straight to the point so there are two sides of the equation there's Africans and there's African Americans believe it or not we talk crap about each other Africans are like, oh, African-Americans, they live in this country filled with opportunities. Why are they not taking advantage of this opportunity? Why are they not going to school? Why are there like a lot of baby mamas, but they don't have baby daddies? Why are they in the gang? They are bad influence. Don't hang out with them because they are going to be bad influence in your life. Stuff like this, Africans will say towards African-Americans. And African Americans would also say to us Africans, like, oh, Africans live on trees. Don't associate me with them. I'm not African. They live on trees. They drink dirty water. Their accent, they smell their food and everything. Like, what I'm saying is so real. It may sound like very, like, oh, but this is the truth. And there are obviously two sides of the equation. Let's talk about the African American side. Some African Americans embrace the African culture. Like, oh, you are from Africa. I want to know more about Africa. But which part of Africa are you from? You know, man, I wish I knew my roots. And there's the same side of African Americans that don't want anything to do with Africa. Like, um, you're from Africa. I'm not from Africa. What do you mean? Those Africans are like this. And basically, they don't want anything to do with the culture and stuff. There's also this Africans. There are Africans that are willing to like, you know, educate African Americans about Africa, like how beautiful Africa is, the culture and everything. They welcome people into African stuff. And there's another side of Africans that are like, you are not African. You are not part of us. Basically being like very resistant towards like African Americans getting to know the African culture. Or like, you are not African. You don't speak the language. You don't, you don't know the culture. So like, why are you part of us? And it's really sad. For an example, in my church, there's this lady that is married to this Nigerian guy. They're a very beautiful couple. I love them. And um, they married and this African-American lady, she really cared so much about the culture and stuff. And, you know, she would come with church and stuff. But like one thing that I know and she's expressed it a little bit because like my mom was the one who made her feel comfortable and stuff is that Africans like we acted a certain way towards her she basically didn't feel like she was part of the culture because like things we do was so rude like in the middle of her we know she doesn't understand the language and stuff we'll be speaking our African language it made her not comfortable and to her in her mind it's like this is me a married to a beautiful African guy and I want to know the culture but like they are not making it easy for me to know all of that creates tension I migrated here to America when I was 14 high school that I went was predominantly black people African Americans. I was so excited. Oh yeah, I'm going to this school, high school in America. I was new. I had the thickest accent and I thought that it would be easier for me to be around African Americans. I was shocked to like go to school. I basically didn't receive the reception that I thought I would. I thought that we were all one people and all that, but like, no, some people made it definitely know. Oh, you African, what do you guys do? dance around the campfire oh your accent is so strong and basically like 
little things made me feel different from the African Americans that made me insecure, especially um, a teenager that has moved to a different country that didn't know anybody. And I thought that, oh, people that look like me, we are basically the same, but we are not. I changed my high school and I moved to like a predominantly white high school. So like my experience in the black high school, I brought it to me in the white people's school. And basically the white people's school, I would say 10% of the population was black. And even with the 10 population being black, they came up to me, they were very welcoming and stuff. Just because I had so much insecurities built in me that these people weren't like very acceptant of me. And when I say very, like not everybody is the same. I had some African-American friends that we were like, yeah. But like some people were just like, no, okay. So I kind of redrew back just because I had bad experience in the all predominantly African-American school. So that was sad. And yeah, I'm going to get to another point. So um, let's just say the African-Americans that don't want anything associated with Africans. I understand you guys. Let's date this back to like slavery. After Africans, the Africans that were slaves left the shores of Africa. It wasn't just easy life for them. Like they were sold as properties. The um, 13th amendment, nobody can actually own a slave, but there were things in the society that was working against the African-American culture. African-Americans back then were trying post-slavery to become something better of themselves. But like the society was actively acting against them, even though like, hey, yeah, you can go no more slavery and stuff. We are gonna find a way to marginalize you guys, label you guys as drug addicts, label you guys as murderers, rapists and stuff. So that by itself threw a lot of African-Americans in prison. Why was there a surge in prison after slavery and most of them were African-American? Our white counterpart, if one person is caught with like a cocaine or whatnot, they'll be sentenced to rehab for a treatment. If a black person was found with a cocaine automatically, you know, we are throwing this person in jail. A lot of people were trying to make life for themselves, but like the society was actively acting against them. Believe it or not, any traumatic event that a person goes through has an effect on the person's life. So if First of all, we have to deal with slavery. Second of all, we have to deal with inequality of the society. It has like a generational effect. When African-Americans, some people are like, we don't want anything to do with Africa. It's like, in a way they feel betrayed. First of all, we have to deal with like being slaves, then, you know, the inequality, the discrimination and the, you know, racism and everything. And if any of our leaders was standing up against the society, they ended up getting killed. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, like, come on, the list goes on. If they say they don't want anything to do with Africans, it's understandable. I'm not saying it's right, but it's coming out of a place of hurt. There's also another part, which is the African side, that it's also sad. Because, like, after slavery happened, Africans had to go, also go through their own personal issues. They were fighting the British, the Europeans that came and colonized Africa and took everything from us. They had to fight them out of the country. Let's talk about South Africa. They had to go through the apartheid. It's so crazy about the apartheid that white people only made a little percentage or only make a little percentage of South African pop um, population. But they were the ruling ones. And people like Nelson Mandela had to fight. And trust me, we know so much about Nelson Mandela, but like there are so many countries in Africa that they also had to personally fight their battles. So it's like two sides. We all haven't had an equal. But rushing back into so today's society, this isn't the time that we should be, we should, separate ourselves from each other at the end of the day we are all humans we all have blood in our vessels why don't we all come together and act as one 
Instead of like us saying that African Americans think like they're this, African Americans think they're like that. We all have our personal struggles. The thing that we all have to understand that we all are humans, we have basic necessity. We wake up, we eat, we want a better life. We want to create a better life for ourselves. So all this, let's put an end to it. Let's make a stop. We need unity between the African, our African American society and our African counterpart. We all need to be one. I've seen the two societies hand in hand. I can say as an adult, I don't see any difference. I shared my personal story earlier. As a teenager, I did see a major difference, but as an adult, do I still see the difference? No. So my dear Africans, if you see African Americans and you think that they are not educated, let me tell you, this is a generational thing. What they had to endure, being free from slavery, but everything in the society is working against you. Sometimes you feel like, um, let me just sit back. It's a psychological thing. Poverty, trauma, and everything is a generational thing. So before you guys cast a judgment on African Americans, how about we try to understand this side? How about we try to understand them? Because, I mean, sometimes we, we, we carry this on our head that, Oh yeah, we are Africans and we moved to the American society and we are doing so much better than African Americans. That shouldn't be our mindset. That shouldn't be our mindset. There are African Americans that grew up whose grandparents, whose great, 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 great grandparents had to endure what they had to do, but they are doing so well. They are doctors, they are lawyers and stuff. So we should try to understand that. And also to my dear African Americans, Please stop calling us names. Stop saying, you know, stop making ignorant comment. Cause like it definitely has an effect on us. And I'm calling for unity in this video. We've all had our past. We all have suffered. But the greater thing that we need to do is to come together. A divided house cannot stand. And we should fight against the issue that we are facing in this society. I mean, let's think about it this way. We are all from the same race, Africans or African-American. We are all from the African race. Ethnicity is different because like African um, Africans moved here, they experienced a different culture and stuff. So that makes them African-Americans, but we are all of the same race. And even if anyone of a different race is watching this, we are all of the human race. Let's try to understand each other. Let's not create unnecessary gap between us. And let's fight against what we are dealing with now, which is racism. So basically, I've lived in the American society and the African society for